Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Is that God of the valley? God of the sunshine. God of the valley. When things go wrong. When things go wrong. He will make a way. Oh, God of the mountain. Thank you, Lord. He is the God of the valley. God of the rain. You are the God of the rain. Oh, yes, oh, yes. When things go wrong, he will make it away. Worship you, Lord. Oh, God of the mountains. Yes, yes, Lord. He's the God of the valley. God of the sunshine, you are the God of the rain. When things go wrong, you will make a way. When things go wrong, oh yes, oh yes, make a way. Oh God of the mountains. God of the mountain, you are the God, God of, of the mountain. God of the sunshine, you are the God of the rain. When things go wrong, you will make a way. I have confidence in you, Manchiga. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Jesus. I have confidence in, in you. Any day in everything, I have confidence, confidence. in you. Jesus, oh, my Lord. I have confidence in you. in you. Oh, yes, Jesus. I have confidence, I have confidence in you. Any time, any day, I have confidence in you, Jesus, my Lord. I have confidence in you, oh yes, Jesus, I have confidence in you, in everything and everything. We have confidence, have confidence in you. Anytime, any day. We have confidence, confidence in you. Jesus, you my Lord. Are... Thank you, Father. I just worship him. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly. You are good indeed. You are a good, good God. Thank you, Father. It's not of he that willing of he that wrote the Lord that showed mercy. You are a king. That his mercy is the, king of the Lord of Lords. Thank you for the your Lord goodness. I of Judah. Oh, thank you for your mercy. Oh, thank you for your mercy. Oh, thank you for your mercy. For your mercy. Oh, thank you for your mercy. Oh, thank you for your mercy. Oh, thank you for your mercy. The grace that enables us. We have to know that you are God. Lily of the valley. 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 Lily of the valley
A life of saving, a life of healing, a life of deliverance. A of healing, a life of magnify your name. Bless the church. Restore your name, O God. Thank you, Lord, because I am mercy. Hallelujah to thy holy name. Let your mercy flow. Lord, you are God. In the name of Jesus. Just want to say thank you, Lord. Honor, majesty, thank you, Lord. Dominion, praise is unto your holy name, Lord. Thanks, thanks. Oh Lord, we give you thanks. Oh yes, Lord, you have made a lot. We are so glad. We are so glad. So glad. Praise God. Praise God. We give you thanks. Lord, we give you thanks. Give you praise. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your protection. We are so glad. Thank you, Lord. You are so sorry. Praise God. Praise God. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name, O God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 You are worthy, you Lord, to be praised. praised. Thank you for those that will not come. Thank you for those you that will not come. Thank you for those that will not come. Thank you for those that will not come. Thank Your name, O Lord, is to be praised. Exalted be the name of God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Our friends, to God, our enemies, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you for the church. Thank you, Jesus, for the church that you blessed me with. Thank you for the church that you blessed me with. Thank you, Jesus, for the church that you blessed me with. Thank you, Jesus, for all of us. Lord, protect us, Jesus, from every one. Very down of the wicked one. Thank you, Lord. Oh, bless you, Lord. Oh, we love you, we glorify you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let the truth shall set us free. Give you all your praise. To open lights to the Lord. Let the truth be set him free. From every predicament of the enemy. From every voice, from every false belief. That he will be delivered. You said that the first thing of the mighty shall be delivered. And he will save your children. Thank you, Lord. Glory and honor. And majesty. Help your holy day, Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, oh Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. 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 Oh, Lord. Father in heaven, we thank you. Thank you. Father, we your name. We thank you for today. Thank, thank you, Lord. for bringing us to this meeting this evening. I love you, Lord. And made into your hands. Oh, the last thing you ever last thing now, I call. Oh, Jesus Christ is saved. Yes, today, today, and forever. Father, we honor you. Let your we adore you. you. Send your we lift up your, your name, O Lord. Because you are the King of your Kings. Your you are the Lord of Lords, the incomparable the Lord God. There are no God formed before you, and there shall not be any after you. Oh, the only Amen. Savior and Lord. Amen. Thank Jesus. you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Of day. Amen. Amen. I love you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So Hallelujah. Good to be in the Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for coming this evening to share the word of God. We are continuing with, with our teaching on um, brokenness and consecration. We are on page five or page seven. 
to start thinking about the next topic after this. Uh, we thank God for how he has led us. And I'm sure you would have improved in your relationship with God just as I have. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Last week we started Amen. the topic, this part B of the topic, consecration. And he uh, said uh, we, we, some of the review is that uh, we should not live our lives independent of God. We should think about God's factor in our lives. What is God's factor? Factor. What does God want us to do? I sent a text to somebody this morning, uh, this afternoon. I said, if Jesus were there, what would he have done? If your leader, your senior pastor was there, God the same message, what would he have done? Amen. Mm -hmm. we, should, we should always think about God's factor in everything that we do. What is God saying? What should I have done if I had included God in the equation? When you are consecrated to God, you will find a purpose for your life. Amen. Mm -hmm. so statement somebody made last year, you consecrated to God, you will find a purpose for your life. If you don't find a purpose for your life, it doesn't matter if you live 100 years, your life would have been wasted. Somebody who lived 20 years before he or she died and fulfilled his or her purpose will be better than a man or a woman who lived 100 years but he not fulfilled God's purpose for his life. So it is when you are consecrated that you will find God's purpose for your life. Amen. Amen. I would say that our bodies are the temple of God. We should therefore cherish it. We should not misuse it. I would say do not agree with others to do evil. Very important. Don't agree with others to do evil. Yes, you may all do the evil, but that person may have instigated you or encouraged you to do the evil. But the person may later on repent and then be forgiven. Then you will be the final loser. Amen. Do not mm -hmm. agree with others to do it. A very simple or common example is you tell your children, you ask your children to tell lies on your behalf, or somebody to tell lies on your behalf. Now, uh, when that man comes, stay here, I'm not at home. Or uh, when somebody comes to look for me, tell the person that I traveled. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Remember Ananias and Sapphira, they connived to uh, give a part of the off of the sales of their product to the church. And it was not a good thing. Their end didn't, they didn't end well. Praise the Lord. It was mm -hmm. crucial enough for them that they showed their people. That is why personal conviction is very, very important. Even though we might, we shouldn't be able to encourage one another the personal conviction is my So they were not convinced why they should sell the land and what they should do with it. They just wanted to be like others. And in the process, they ended up uh, destroying themselves. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, let's continue from where we stopped last week. We stopped and then... Uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think I just said we come. Consecration is an act of will. That's uh, so where we stop. So we're going to continue from. We, we read Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. I'm going to continue from. It is a voluntary. Paul's speech and decision and plead. I will hand over to our big brother, Pastor John, and then we're to uh, please continue from where we stopped. Last week, thank you, sir. Praise the Lord, Amen. hallelujah! Thank you, Pastor thank you, Sir Kate Brain, and other brethren who are online. It's another wonderful day and that privilege to feed at the table of the Lord. This is food for the soul, so may the Lord nourish us. May the Lord satisfy us, grant us understanding, 
and give all the grace to obey his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, continue from where we stopped. See, consecration is for all believers. It is not only for ministers, for apostles, for pastors, for prophets, evangelists. No, every believer, we need to consecrate ourselves to God, young or old. What really comes to my mind here is Daniel. Daniel and the three Hebrew children who were taken to exile. Mm. They were young people, possibly around 16, 17 years of age, were taken to captivity. And in the land of captivity in Babylon, they distinguished themselves, especially Daniel. Daniel proposed in his heart that he will not defy himself with the king's meat or drink. And it was even mandatory that all the young talents from Israel, you know, from Judah, that they be fed on special diets for a period of about three years. There about it was the training ground, it was a time of training, you know, for them. The king white groomed them, you know, in leadership groom them in the knowledge and wisdom of Babylonian culture. They were given the best treatment you can think of in terms of food and drinks. But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not define himself. This is self-conviction. We'll talk about oh. conviction. This mm -hmm. is self-conviction. This is what I believe. This is my belief. And this is what I am going back to do. We need so much of that self conviction today, especially in the present day society. We need that. Without that, that conviction, we'll just be swayed by the crowd, by what is ready. This is the in thing. This is what they are not doing. This is the latest now. Everybody is doing it. So, you are no exception. But if you are consecrated to God and you are a man or woman of conviction, say, no, there are boundaries. There are some things you may not compel me to do. I can do anything for you. I can respect you. I can do my job very well, but not in this area. Daniel and the tribal children exemplify that. Even in very difficult situation, foreign land, where nobody was monitoring them. Oh. They consecrated themselves out to God. Can we do that where we are now? We are pilgrims in this world. Jesus said we are in this world, but we are not of this world. We found we are in this world quite all right. Yeah, but we are not of this world. Just like Daniel was in Babylon, but Daniel was not of Babylon. He was in Babylon. His heart was in God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it's voluntary and Paul beseech, he please that look, we should consecrate ourselves. Romans 12, 1 to 2. We read it last time. It is like presentation to Jesus. I present myself to you, Lord. I mm. consecrate myself to you. His personal, your bodies. Is a sacrifice, a living sacrifice. The earthly father or mother is hot when a child draws back from an intimate relationship with him or her. When, for example, a child refuses to submit to the parents' will, the parents will not be happy. Will not be happy, and that intimate relationship will be disturbed somehow. The same thing, God wants us so, you know, to be consecrated. He has done everything he needs to do for us. There is nothing more God can do for you. He has done everything. He has given unto you. He has given you to be all that pertain to this life and godliness. What it takes to live in a difficult world, in a volatile world, in a world where people no longer believe God, 
It's not like the days of Noah anyway. It's not new. The days of Noah, uh, serving God, was it popular? No. No. Days of Lot, serving God, was it popular? No. Today, is it popular to be a Christian? No. A lot of persecution everywhere. But if you explain the word to love you, it means you don't even understand the Bible. You just don't know the word of God. If you begin to ask, well, why, 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 why did they persecute me? Why do they hate me? Why did they hate the Lord? It's not new. Jesus said it. If himself, they did not love him and they hated him, how much more we that belong to him? They hated to the extent is part of him. They crucified him. A most terrible and cruel death suffered by the most wicked criminals. But Jesus never committed any sin. For your sake and my sake, he went all the way to Calvary. Amen. What can we do to show that we love God? Consecrate yourself to God. Love is reciprocal. God first loved me, first loved you. All you need to do now is to love him back and consecrate yourself to him, not pasture. You give part of your body, your, your life and service to God, then the other reserve. He gave his all. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. So ever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He gave all. So we need to surrender all. Serving the Lord with gladness without reservation, consecration. Serving the Lord without reservation. All area of your life, social area of your life, academic area of your life, social area, career area, family life, friendship, when it comes to friendship, when it comes to business, everything. Because there are some people who believe that when you are in the church, you do religious things, you pray, you read Bible and all that. But once you are in business, once you are in your office, you know, it's a different ball game. The business is business. Well, for those who believe business is business, you should know that God told Joshua that if you follow him and meditate upon his word and do his commandment, he will grant him good success. So it's meaning that not all success is good success. Unbeliever, don't they have success? Unbeliever, don't you see unbelievers who are very successful in business? Don't see unbelievers who prosper in riches and wealth? And some of us Christians, we don't even, can't even compare to them. So that's not the measure of success in life. Fulfilling God's purpose in your life is real success. So in consecration, we need to discover God's purpose for our lives. We said it much earlier that the purpose of God for your life is not necessarily your career pursuit. That you are a medical doctor, you are an engineer, you are a pilot. That is not necessarily God's purpose in your life. God's purpose is knowing God, having a personal relationship with God, serving Him, loving Him, worshiping Him, and living with Him eternally. So in a nutshell, as the purpose of God, in serving Him, you will be His word, testify of His goodness. Talk to unbelievers about Jesus. It's a part of it. Consecrated my life unto God. What about you? Serving the Lord with gladness, without reservation. It was hard for Abraham to offer Isaac. Very hard. He, only saw, he had prayed for, for 25 years and eventually the son came and God said, sacrifice your son. Very hard. Very difficult. But then, he offered 
his son. That's what the Bible says. Even though God provided a lamb in place of Isaac, in the New Testament, it's like past tense. He obeyed God for his son. That's the kind of love. If God gave his only begotten son, what act, why should we not also give everything about ourselves? So at this stage, let's take some contributions. Remember, it's a Bible study. We pray for your active participation and reading of biblical passages. Ask questions as well, because an opportunity to learn. It's, we're not preaching a sermon. In the sermon, you don't ever ask questions. When a Bible study like this, they ah, you said one thing. I don't understand that. Please explain. That's why we're here. Praise God. Amen. Yes. Any question, any contribution, any observation? All right. No. Serving the Lord with gladness. It was hard for God to part with the Holy Begotten Son who said, it was hard for Joseph to live a dedicated life to God. Oh my God, think about Joseph. Joseph was sold as a slave by his own brothers. They sold him to get money. It was like commodity inside of his brother. Not talking about the initial hatred and all that because of the father's uh, special garbage that he bought for him. But eventually, he said, let's make money out of this man. Can you think about that? That man would have lived in bitterness all his life, like many people do today. They will always say, oh, because my father did this, because my mother did it, because that auntie did it. I stayed with my uncle. My uncle was very bitter. I did, oh, for that reason, I will never forgive him. Oh, I hate him. Sometimes the pressure comes because of what people have passed through in earlier years. Some call it PTSD. Suffer certain things. Some sexual abuse. Different kind of abuse. What real? And they refuse to forget the past and move ahead. Joseph is a wonderful model. He did not spend his life in misery. He just said, go, see what it happened. And the process we able to why he was in Potiphar's house, God prospered him. <laughs> we may not even go to that, but you know that. That's what the Bible said. He, he, Potiphar was prospered, instead prospered. What then is prosperity that Joseph had? What kind of prosperity? Oh, is it is it a record that maybe while he was there, he was building houses, he was building estates, had mansions, had a lot of money in the bank? <laughs> Sometimes we just think about prosperity in terms of uh, money, material possession. In fact, that is how the church measures prosperity today, which is very, very wrong. It was hard for God to part, though it was hard for Moses to leave the pleasures and comfort of Pharaoh's palace. That's another hard decision. Think about Moses. He was already brought up in the palace. Oh my God. Think about that. If you are in such a position in the society, highly privileged from a royal home, maybe you are called a prince or princess, anything you need, the best education you can think of, best food, best cars, best anything you want, and you have grown up in such a home. Or in Nigerian setting, for example, if you are son or a daughter of a senator, woo, you are born in affluence. 
So Moses was in such a place where he lacked nothing. But when the call of God came upon him, what did he choose? He chose rather to suffer affliction with, the, with his own people than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Again, this is personal conviction. You see, those people, they are poor. Those people, they are persecuted. Those people, they are the underdog. They are relegated in society. But that's where I belong. That's where I belong. It would be foolishness for the average man or woman at that time. For anybody, say, look, who they put honey for a man and go for me or something like that? <laughs> You know, people always think that, oh, that is trees. It gives you plenty of money, pleasures, and all that. It doesn't satisfy the soul. They are saying the money cannot do. So his heart was yearning for his own people. Oh, those are my people. I know I'm in the palace. I know I'm enjoying life, but I feel sick. I'm homesick. Those are my people. They need deliverance. They need salvation. They need a leader. And he obeyed God. Could have resisted, say, oh, I'm okay. What, what, what do I need in this life? What do I need? That I have not God or I will not get here. So we just think about worldly pleasure, worldly pleasure, and sometimes we forget the purpose why God called us. He fulfilled his purpose. God called him to be a deliverer. He recognized it. I wasn't there, but it was personal conviction. God told him, and God showed his sign. Yes. For this reason, I was born. And then he took the bull by the horn. It was hard for Job to lose all and still remain faithful to God. Lost his children, lost his cattle, property, everything, 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 all at once. Sudden destruction came. And even his body was afflicted. In all this, Job he feared God. Even when the wife was suggesting otherwise. Thank God for our wives. Our wives can be very wise and they can give us very useful suggestions sometimes. But it's not all in all cases. In case of Jews' wife, it was something different, anti-Christ, anti-God. In case of Sarah, the husband obeyed. My wife said it, obeyed, and that her to trouble, would not have uh, Ishmael. And they say they are not even the Isaac. So, the God grant us wisdom. Amen. Be able to discern good advice from bad advice. Vice versa, even from husband. The husband can tell you something. If it's not in line with the word of God, Bible says you obey, submit yourself. It doesn't mean even your husband is wrong. That you not still submit, even in error, in disobedience to God. You are going to stand the judgment. Or a Saf uh, Safira, Anania Safira, the wife called. Maybe she was even one suggested. You are not wise, my husband. Let's do it like let's do it like that. Both of them agreed. Have one mind. Husband and wife, they are supposed to have one mind. But what I'm trying to say now, it's all in all cases. There are some cases where your husband may say something wrong. You don't have you have to choose between God and your husband at that time. What does Jesus say? Say if you really if you really love me and want to be my disciple, you have to forsake all. Forsake your father, your mother, you know. You have to hate them, meaning that you have to choose Jesus as number one in preference to others. 
to your father, to your mother, to your husband, to your wife, to your children. That's what it means. In very difficult situations, people make such decisions. Should I follow? My parents, my family, they are saying I should deny Jesus so I can live. Should I? Yeah. I love my parents so much. Did I just, you know, after all, God will forgive you now. Just go, just deny. Take the mark. It doesn't matter. They will forget all scripture if, if they ever knew scripture. But then you have to take a stand. It was hard for Job, and he took side with Jesus, with God. It was hard for Paul, Apostle Paul, to witness his home. Even when he knew that there was danger there. Mm -hmm. There is danger there quite a right, but my going there might lead to the salvation of many people. Think about that. It's consecration. It was hard for Paul to witness in Ephesus Ed. In Ephesus, where they had the goddess Diana, very popular at that time. The whole world worshipped Diana. And now Paul preached the gospel. And those silver smiths, those who were making things for worship in Diana worship. Many of them surrender their hearts, their crafts, because they now they know God and they want to consecrate themselves to God. There are some people when they claim they have known Jesus, they still hold on to a lot of things from the world. Still hold on to all those things that can become snares to them later on. If you don't do away with them, if you don't burn the bridge, someday. Might be tempted to go back. And those things you leave behind, it can become snares, spiritual snares. Mm. They can become portals of entry of demonic mm. agents, demons, devils into one's life. If you know a very demonic, oh, somebody was no bony, and oh, thank God, one day preacher came, the God and believed. But it still had the concussion. It still had the garment. Everything is just cherished it. You don't know how much I bought this garment? Ha! Ah, a lot of money. What about this? What about that? they consider all the costs? Say, oh, let's let just leave them. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Those same things will become snake to you later and you would like to go back. So, as many of us are listening to us, this Bible study. I pray that you will learn from this and surrender all to God. All. Amen. When Elisha agreed to follow Elijah, he was not an idle man. He was a businessman, he was using cattle. What he did, he sacrificed even the cattle that he had. I entertained his friend and said, Bye bye. He bought, he bought the carriage. Everything's associated with that business. He bought it to ashes. No, no, there will be no turning back. That's what it signifies. He bought the bridge to the past. And saw how committed he was to the cause of God and to the master Elijah. And eventually was rewarded with double portion of Elijah's. Oh Is there a word in consecration? Sure. Yes. Yes, in this life and the world to come. As for Apostle Paul, some people say, okay, what was his reward? I want somebody to tell us. What was his reward? I'm asking a question. You refuse to ask me a question. I'm asking one right now. He forsook everything. He counted all but done. He had, he had a legal degree. He had a degree in law. You know, he worked for Gamaliel and all that. So he was a very respectable Pharisee. But when the call came, 
See, I could not disobey this heavenly vision. What did he gain? Let's talk. If he gained eternal life, so that I may know him and the power of his restoration. So Paul, Paul, Paul was more interested in gaining eternity. So at the end of his life, he said, I fought a good fight, I run a good race. All that is left for me is the crown of righteousness which the Lord reserved for me and for those who love his appearing. So Paul, uh, actually, what, what we talk about gain and possession, it, it is not how much, like you said, it is not how much we have that is uh, the a thing. Like Joseph was in Egypt. Did we hear that he started building castles, building houses, and buying all that? But he, he, he impacted lives. That was a great thing he achieved. He saved his family from destruction. He preserved the, 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 the Israelite race because of his possession. Now, so we should not trace sources to uh, acquisition alone, but how much we are able to impact lives. So Paul imparted lives. Almost half of the New Testament Bible uh, books in the New Testament were written by Paul, and they're still imparting our lives. So that is what he gained, knowing God and fulfilling his purpose in life, being able to minister to the Gentile and by extension to us, to every other, uh, every other person who believes in Christ today, who is not originally Jew, a Gentile, it was through Paul's ministry that the word of God spread to them. So Paul gained a lot, he acquired a lot. So when we are thinking about possessions, when we are thinking about uh, uh, what we gain from our following Christ, the peace of mind and the respect of command. When a HIV was very common, um, uh, common in, in our country those days, and there was this rumor, this uh, story that some people would get the HIV from the toilet, from Barbie and all that. One of my colleagues told me, look, even if every person is getting HIV from Barbie Saloon, God will not allow you to because of the kind of life you have, you are living. So that is again, the, the, the serving Christ gives us peace of mind and we are able to overcome challenges which ordinarily will melt people down and make them do some other terrible things. So a life that is consecrated to, like we say, it is not, it's, it's not easy. Let's not uh, play about it that it's easy. It's not easy. The one poor suffer is not the one you may suffer. But there are some, some other smaller things which you may not take cognizance of that you may suffer. I get, there was this as, example I gave before of in the company, the, the, the members of staff agreed to contribute certain amount, equal amount of money for Christmas party. So you know, a committee was set up, they bought all kinds of drinks, alcohol, malt, uh, pops, and some wine, bottles of wine. This lady was, who is, is a wife to a pastor, a believer, a known believer in the company. She looked at her and said, ah, John is taking beer. Beer is costlier than pop. This other guy is taking that one. It costlier than this. We all contributed the same amount. She decided to take wine. Not realizing that that wine has some percentage of alcohol. At the end of the day, she messed herself up. What am I saying? It may not be like uh, Abraham was asked to sacrifice his son. Your temptation may not be like that, or your child may not be like that, but just recognizing and defending Christ where you are. I am a child of God. That may just be your own, to represent Christ, to stand out. God needed Abraham to sacrifice his child as a proof of 
is love for him. He may not demand that from me, but there may be some other things like sleep, like contribution to the work of the ministry, money contributions, and all that. So we should watch out for areas that we are di diverting submission to God. Those are areas where we uh, are likely facing some trials. I don't know if I'm able to explain myself properly. Areas where you are able to uh, project Christ rather than yes, yes. your own interests. Those are the areas you might be uh, you might be tempted. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. Yeah, we are five or six. Six. Let's other people make contribution. We are discussing now. Contribution. I asked a question and the pastor has partly answered the question. Right? Maybe everybody is not satisfied or you are satisfied, but you speak your own. Now, how did Paul gain? How, what was his profit in, in consecrating his life and everything to God? He did. He, right. uh, okay, Paul. Paul didn't look back. Uh, I honor that for me. Like it just makes me uh, think of. I think of Paul continuously. Like don't look back on the past. Look towards the future. And and he was he was proud of, of what he he he'd done. He 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 looked forward. You know, for for his eternal life, plus his reward, uh, be beyond that. God eternal life. Eternal life. Thank you, brother. Thank you. That's true. But you see, eternal life, that's what we have emphasized and impact on the lives of other people, benefiting other people. It's like he suffered all that because I know in suffering all this persecution, many, many people will enter the ark of salvation. So that's part of the success and benefit. But not personal. It's not something material. Like oh. this is tangible. Mm. Even there were there were people who who he took as friends or brothers. They betrayed him. He suffered persecution in in the hand of false brethren. Oh. Take care of that. But Jesus promised us that look, when we consecrate ourselves to him. We are going to have eternal life. Mm -hmm. But in this world, we are going to have brothers, sisters, uncles, nieces, mothers, fathers, we're going to have many things with persecution. Mm -hmm. So it's not excluded. Having material blessing is not excluded in the blessing package of God, even while we are in this world. This one is important. Our reward is not just in heaven. I remember in those days in Nigeria, when teachers were not well paid, I don't know whether they're still well paid, man. You know, they say, ah, teacher, have comfort. Your reward is in heaven. You know? <laughs> yes. You teach teach people. Don't just comfort yourself. Don't compare yourself with doctors and nurses. You see, your own reward is in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> we all need, we all need the material blessings. And God Himself is interested in our material blessing. He prospers us. But that should not be the yardstick our overall success. That's why it's important because people they now mistake materialism as the, the guidepost for success. Success in ministry and all that. How large your congregation is. Your ministry, do you have jets yet? Do you have a jet? <laughs> Although you are be your categorized, those are the measure. How large is the, your money, the account, and all that? Your purchasing power. Those things, emphasis should not be in that. There's a scripture that the Lord told us about material, about blessing. That if you remember the scripture, please let us know that the blessing of a man does not consist in the 
abundance of his possession. Of what he holds. Yeah, if you know the scripture, please let us, because it's very relevant to what we are saying now. If you know the scripture, let us know. So as far as God is concerned, he has promised us divine help. He has promised us good life. We have friends. And even, he will not, say, he will not deny us of anything that will give us pleasure so long as is good in his sight. He gives us material blessings. He gives us money. He doesn't want us to lack. It's not God's will that we lack and be in want. Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. All that I need, God blesses me with. You need good Amen. car, God bless you with it in the name of Jesus. You need good husband, good wife, God will bless you in the name of Jesus. Yes, they are part of the blessing. I wish above all things that thou may prosper and oh, be yes, a good health. even as thy soul prospered. Mm -hmm. Your soul is prospering. God is interested in your health. Your health. So don't say, hey, buddy, it doesn't matter. Your body matters to God. Take care of yourself. And he wants you to enjoy divine health. I want you to prosper and make impact in the lives of people. When you impart to that people, you are you are you are getting more blessing. Revelation 22, verse 12. What does it say? Good news. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. What does it say? Let somebody read it if you don't know exactly what it says. Revelation 22, 12. The word is which is coming to give it to us according to as our work shall be. Reward shall be. Hey. He rewards us. That's so why on earth here he reward us? Good health, peace, Look material blessing, work and, and then eternal life. Our reward in eternal life. It's going to be different from here because that one is determined upon what your impact, your impact in the lives of people. Like we've been talking about Apostle Paul. He had made so much impact. A few days ago, we were just talking about, uh, you know, the blessedness of, Christi of Christian life. How that we that were foreigners to God, we that were aliens to God, we that were enemies of God are still now reconciled. He broke the wall of partition between the Jews and Gentiles. Amen. And now you are a Jew, you believe in Jesus, you belong to the body of Christ. John chapter 1, verse 12. Oh. You are a Gentile, you believe in Jesus, you belong to the body of Christ. Uh -huh. No more different, no more enmity. All of you cannot talk to God mm -hmm. on equal terms because we now become joined as with Christ. Mm -hmm. No discrimination, no racial discrimination. Oh, you are from this tribe, I'm from that tribe. Nothing like that. You are from this country. Mm -hmm. God created all of us. And he wants everybody saved, but through the blood of Jesus. Oh. Yes. John chapter 1 verse 12 as many as received him he gave them power, gave them right gave them the privilege to become sons oh, of God Jesus. what a wonderful privilege if Christ had not died that would not be possible and if mm. Apostle Paul had not preached because he became a messenger to the Gentiles initially it was thought that oh the gospel was just to the Jews Jews even Apostle Peter focused on the Jews Gentiles, no, those people, they are not holy no. at all. Those people, they are unclean, unclean, unclean. But in the new covenant, Jesus Christ became the bridge for the two parties to merge and come, become one in Christ Jesus. It is wonderful. No class difference. No social status in the body of Christ. Oh, I'm hired. We see ourselves as members of the same body. 
with mm. different gifts, with different abilities, different talents, different positions mm. and privileges. But we all belong to Christ. Amen. Amen. Any more questions so, in this regard? Luke 12, verse 15. What you ask us to look out for? Come Luke, can you it. read it? The book of Luke 12, 15 says, <laughs> And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. Okay, so that's very clear. Thank you, that scripture. So if that's the only takeaway from this study, I see it's important. So look at success from God's point of view. Okay. Any more questions or contribution before we go further? Can I say something about this success or possession order? Like you said before, like scripture says, God is not interested in our suffering. He wants us to have the best for, for us. But how we go about it, like we said last week, we should find out God's factor in everything. Okay. Acquiring these possessions, what is God's factor in it? If you allow the pursuance of material things and wealth and fame and all that, to distract you from the things of God, then something is wrong somewhere. Otherwise, God is our Father, and He's the one that made all these things for our pleasure. He said, "The love of money is the root of all evil. The love of it, you now love the money more than any other thing, and you can do any any anything, even if it's against the scripture." Once money is involved, the salt is strong. That is where the check is, where we have to talk about sacrificial lives in order to consecrate ourselves to God and to make, which is our reasonable word, he said, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies to God, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. God must be in the, in the equation in all that we pursue. And that is evident. When you have God in everything that you pursue, that's evident that you are becoming consecrated. Amen. 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 There's a scripture that says, Godliness with contentment is great gain. Yeah. It's in Hebrews. Let's read it. First Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy 2. First Timothy 6. Godliness with contentment is great. Yes. Yeah. First Timothy 6. First Timothy 6. Check verse 6. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there. First Timothy 6. Eight. Anybody there? Godliness and contentment is much gain. But not into this world. First Timothy 6 to 10. Okay. Anybody reading it? Yeah, First Timothy 6 from verse 6. 6 to 10. But godliness God. with contentment is great gain. Hmm. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. Amen. Praise the Lord. Read to 10. Thank you. Read to 10. Okay. Verse, uh, verse 8. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare 
and into many foolish and hurtful laws, which drawn men in destruction and prediction. 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which why some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves true with many sorrows. Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. From the faith. Also, also that. Think about that. While we are saying this now, there are some ministries they claim they are members of the body of Christ. They talk about Jesus. They talk about miracles. You see them sell water. They call it miracle water. They oh. don't give it a free oil. They print labels of the church. Miracle water. Use this one miracle water. <laughs> miracle pen. Miracle comb. Miracle comb. Comb your hair. See, cool. miracle, if you are going for an interview, don't forget to comb, you know, with that special comb. It's for miracle. Keep it very well. Some people who have, they are not selling the book of life. You heard about the book of life in the Bible, where the names of all the redeemed are. There are some ministry now. I'm not naming any name. But it's good for people who hear this. Examine yourself and see what you are believing. The oh. book of life cannot be purchased. Some people are purchasing plus in heaven. They are not be there, but they are purchasing plus heaven. They are selling it now. Next year for money, money. Oh. Because prophet, man of God, has said it. Oh. Believe it. Don't question man of God. Who are paying dollars to purchase plots of land in heaven? Uh -uh. Are people are still fucking Have you heard huh? that? multitudes uh -huh. of people? This is what it's me. Multitudes and multi possibly professors. But when it comes to hypno uh, being hypnotized and all that, how are they giving them the land here? It doesn't matter whether you're a professor, you're an engineer, you are a doctor. You just act foolishly that time. So there is dollar in heaven to buy miracle. Money. Miracle everything. I can't name them all, but virtually everything. There's even miracle fish. Miracle fish. If you buy that fish, it's always not free. You have to buy. What is happening here? That scripture we just read, remind, uh, we just read reminds me of this. Covetousness. We are making money out of all this. Mon real money, miracle done. People making millions out of it. People are following the, the motive is money. What do you mean, miracle, miracle, everything, miracle, 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 miracle? Jesus Christ came to give a miracle, miracle, miracle. But Jesus people was giving it free. You don't work, you want miracle money. You're not working, you want miracle money. So you can see where some Pentecostals are going right now. They are infringing on that scripture. God leader with contentment is great gain. But those who convert after money and possession, they do many evil things. They can even kill, ritual killing, can kill your opponent. Pastor can kill another pastor. That's happened, it's on news. Yes, that's happened before. But don't tell me these are these are not the real church. Who told you? They are people call up upon God. They have the Bible. They preach. Some they have signs and wonders. How do we know who are, who are children of God? It's difficult anyway. But like we have already believed, the church is a mixed multitude. Some have converted after this. Jim Jones, no, I think, Jim Jones, uh, 1978 that's... of Guyana. Question. He made people to sell their property and everything, bring it to him before eventually gave them poison to drink. Prophet. He started very well as a God-fearing 
pastor. So every one of us, we have to take it to the word of God. Not commonize the word of God at all. God means what he says. So convert after this material possession. They do many hurtful things against their soul. Yes, you can ask your question. Okay, to ask question. Okay. Don't know As I said, well, that is why they said we should check the we should check the word of God that comes with the scripture. Because if if you know the scripture, you will not be you will not be easily fooled. Because I, I I don't want to I don't know whether it's it notice whatever it is the word of God is the truth. It's what directs us. So when you hear the word of God with from the pulpit, you should be able to uh, look through it, compare it with the scripture. Because sometimes I imagine how they said a man of God is now making people like some men of God, making people to now be his red carpet that he's walking on. Mm -hmm. The scripture did not say that. And I can't see myself lying down and letting someone walk on me or me walking on someone. So it is inadequate knowledge of the word of God that makes people succumb to these things and sometimes too over zealousness for miracle you want to get what you've not sown so 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 most of them is because of lack of knowledge he said my people perish because of lack of knowledge and that is why it is good for everyone to attend bible study and have that opportunity of asking questions and clarifying doubts so that we don't go astray and we won't let people lead us astray. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. But in many of these big congregations, my sister, many are professors, doctors, learning. No, but, but, yeah. but the academic knowledge does not make you know the word okay, of God. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. So, so go to Bible schools and all that. Where else can they, they are Bible school products? Some pastors, you know, the pastors who, who join their senior pastors or apostles to do all these things. They are learning, they go to school, they study the Bible. I don't know what else to say, but I don't know. I really don't yeah, know. Yeah, but, but uh, ab 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 absolutely, we see that something is going wrong. Uh -huh, something is going wrong. So what is going wrong, like you said, is the covetousness. That is the spirit of covetousness. The want, 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 and never come to the knowledge of satisfaction and the truth. That is that Thank is you. what is happening. You see now, it's a spirit. Yeah. yeah. Balaam, prophet oh. Balaam. He was a true to... prophet until temptation came. Because of increase, oh, I will give you more money. I will do this. I will do that. I will do that. He he that said no before. It was only what God tells me I will do. He started to yield to Balak. He said, "I won't go. Ah, I won't go. Okay, okay. Maybe the money is not enough. I'll give you more. I'll give you more." So that enticement made him to go. But eventually, God's will was still done. When he wanted to cause the Israelites, he found himself blessed there. How can I cause whom God has blessed? Not, yeah. There's no divination against Jacob. No enchantment. No enchantment against Israel. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is not a man that should lie. Mm -hmm. This spirit of covetous and beware of that spirit. Beware of the spirit of Balaamism. The word of Gehazi spirit. Gehazi oh. was under a prophet now. Oh. A man of God, close like a PA. Just the master said, Elisha said, No, I'm not going to take any money. 
you are healed. Um, remember that uh, general, Neyman, who was healed? He brought this brother. <laughs> no, no, no. I had no ask. I'm not had for your money. No, 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 no. Go back. Go. I don't need it. But the servant, a minister of God, PA to Elisha. Yeah, my God, no need them. But me need them both. And <laughs> he devised ways to go. He went back. He had to tell a lie. Not even one lie. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you know what happened. He ripped leprosy. Mm -hmm. So you can see miracle stone. But we now even convict people. So see, in the Bible, remember that David used stone. Anointed stone to kill Goliath. I now have the stones for sale. I now have the stones, especially if they are been to Israel. They are able to get something from River Jordan and all that. Woman said, the spirit behind that? Holy this, holy that, holy the holy rock, holy stone. Anointed stone. Anointed sword. Anointed. Uh, Handkerchief or the, the motive behind it all, money. They are not interested in the welfare of the people. Mm -hmm. So to be careful because this is happening in the church of God, which you condemn. Reprove every work of darkness. Reprove them. Reprove everyone. Be saved. Uh -huh. In my head, I, anybody who listen to this uh, replay and is uh, in such a congregation where this thing done, the person will be wiser now. We learn to cherish what God has said. Say, ah, I just want really on the right track. Just because uh, uh, David used stone. So uh, they now got stone from a place near where David lived. And they now got anointed <laughs> stone, begin to sell. And noted this, anointed that, anointed that all for sake of money. Mm -hmm. Beware of the spirit of covetousness. Beware of the spirit of balamism. Any more contribution? Time is going. It is, it is very, very important that we stick to the word of God. I, I love what you just said. Reprove every work of darkness. If you don't, if you know it and you don't correct it, you become a part of it. Good. So that is why we are bold to say these things. Uh, God will help us. Amen. Don't compromise it. Don't say, I won't let it not be if from my mother will hear. Amen. Spirit of God, Jesus said, what I say to you in the secret, blow it up, out. There are sometimes God minister to us as individuals, or tells you something, it, it because every other person can, it, it's not going to speak directly to everybody. He speaks to you, you speak to others. But if you keep it to yourself, then you are doing something wrong. Okay. There are a lot of things going on in the churches. The Bible says, let those that have ears hear what the Spirit says to the church. Yes. That's why we keep up appealing that. By the grace of God, we are trying our best to Put up the word of God. Put out the word of God as it is. And when you receive these our uh, messages, our records, please share to everybody. Amen. Hundred people watch. One person repents. That's okay. But Jesus will leave the ninety nine and go after the one. Please don't hide the word of God. As much as you have, as long as you have opportunity, no matter who is involved. Even if it's a renowned uh, pastor rebuking, I've, I've told some of my, my, I've preached in my congregation that if you see me doing what is wrong, please tell me. If you see me preaching anything outside of scripture, tell me. And if I persist, go away. You have to save your soul. Because you're not going to say, oh, I, no, no, no. The line between sense and nonsense is very narrow. So please let those that have ears hear what the Spirit says 
to the church. And like that, we'll reprove every walk of darkness. Don't tolerate it. Don't support it. Don't en encourage it. Mm. As long as you have the opportunities, please let the person know. The person may come after you. If he's bigger than you, it's the society. Well, it's better to die in the hands, uh, die being persecuted than die peacefully in your house and then go to hell. Because he said, if I tell you and you don't tell them, they are blood will be required from you. Praise yeah. the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So there yeah, is um um the verse in the Bible, Revelation chapter eighteen, verse four. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, "Come out of them, my people, that ye be not partakers of our sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues." There are plagues from Egypt. All those ones that fell on them. At the end, why did Pharaoh allow Moses to go with his people? Several plagues were upon them. God is telling us this revelation that we should come out of these people so that we will not rob, to not rob on us. All those things that will come upon them at the end. As our pastor said, they may be renounced men of God. We call them big, big men of God. But when you investigate truly and see that where they have put their hands, what they are saying is wrong. Get out. Don't promote their, their, their words or their gospel anymore. Correct them if you have opportunity. Many of them, many of the disciples of these people are afraid. They say, who are you? Touch not my anointed servant and do my prophet no harm. They are our prophets of these days. You need not to talk to them. If you are talking about them, you are blaspheming based on the fear they lay on them. Many people, many of us. So all these ones, we will, I will say something to you. My sister, watch and judge for yourself. Find out before you make final conclusion, find out whether what you see or what people say is true. Then you make your decision. God bless you. Amen. Amen. I know time is going, but let me just read you passage from Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, verse... Verse 20, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because when God said this letter to his seven churches, there's always something in most cases to commend them for. Oh, you poor have done this. You, you poor have reproved those who say they are prophets and they are not. Is that not judgment? I've written something in case anybody said that about that expression. Touch not my not I do my prophet no harm. If you are interested, I can send it to you. You have to be wise. Otherwise, how do we know right or wrong? When your Christ said, beware the last day that be false prophets for me. How will you know that if you don't judge? Use that word, terminology, judge. Cannot distinguish between right and wrong. And say, this is wrong. And this is evil. So Paul just swallowed that word. Touch not my anointing and do my prophet no harm. So Jesus Christ commended those who did good. And say, so notwithstanding, verse 20, I have a few things against the church body of Christ. Because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, which calling has said a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants. So in the body of Christ, they are Jezebel today. They are those with that Jezebel spirit. They say, Jezebel woman, I will, I will call her that woman. But I will not call the name, I don't even know the name, but I will send a video where in the name of anointing a pastor, a pastor or pastors, pastor, lady pastor. He said, look, my breasts are anointed. <laughs> if you suck my breasts, your problems are gone. 
I yeah. watched the video where some men, men, they lined up to kiss, to, to kiss the breast or to suck the breast. And okay. one of them, you, you, are, you can best imagine what will happen. I'm not the one to tell you. When you now stuck somebody's breast, the reaction, the hormones, and what will happen in the body, and what happened in that scene, is not for me to tell you what happened. I've also seen where the man, a male pastor, who put his tongue into a woman's mouth, peace, to receive anointing, healing anointing. Oh. All these they are they don't claim to be native daughters, they are there because there's hardly any way people the ordinary people can we say who is who. We all dress the same, we carry Bible, we teach, we ask on the school, we have all these, everything, everything. We speak in tongues, we live in signs and wonders. This is why it's very delicate because you can hardly now say, blood like, oh, this is a native doctor. This is not. No. They are all looking the same. So in all those letters, read it yourself to the seven churches. There's a place where God commanded them. Say, yes, I commend you because you have reproved them who say they are prophets and they are not. They say they are apostles, but they are not. God commanded them. Apostle Paul rebuked Apostle Peter without bitterness. Without hatred, but with a view to correcting, even Barnabas, his close associate, went with them and he rebuked them only in the Bible. But we're never told they were enemies that they quoted because that have a pure motive, even in doing that, when you want to correct any other person. But you see, be have the mind of Christ and be God's representative, ambassador indeed. Everything goes, I close your eyes, close your eyes. Politics in the church. We have to be very, very careful. The Lord help every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much for that concluding passage from Revelation chapter 2. Um, if you have the time, I will request you to check us out our, on our YouTube. Uh, three, four weeks ago, I preached a sermon on the overcoming the Overcomer Part 1, Part 2, wherein we read that scripture. And the question I asked was, if God were to write to the um, North American Christians, what would he be telling us? If God were to write to uh, the Europe Christians, what would he be telling them? African Christians, what would he be telling them? And we narrowed it down to say, if God were to write to me, as an individual, what will he be telling me? Last week, by the grace of God, I shared with in our church with what God told me when I asked him, Lord, write to me. What are you going to write to me now? What will you be telling me? All the purpose is for us to improve our lives. I like what uh, there's something I was struggling with this afternoon as I was writing a text to somebody. Uh, God does use our brother to correct and encourage me. He said, reprove every walk of darkness. It doesn't Amen. matter who is involved. Yeah. Let the person be a military man, whatever he is. What is wrong is wrong. Geo. Let it be a geo, whatever their names are, whatever. Reprove every walk of darkness. Then okay. I will also say, please pray for them. Yes. Because they have been deceived by the deceiver. Uh -huh. Even though it was through the love of money, covetousness or whatever that the enemy had used, please pray for them. It is not over until it is over. It's over, yeah. So let us keep supporting one another in prayers. Amen. Let's pray. Can we sing this song to conclude? I surrender all to Jesus. Just mm -hmm. the first one and the last. Okay. God bless you. Go on.
Oh, so Jesus, Jesus I, I surrender unto Him. I praise Him. What a place love and trust in for today's study. Just say, Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Thank, thank you, Lord, you for these well. studies. Thank you, Lord. Thank Ask God to me. remind you of His ways oh, Father, Lord, and Father. the grace to practice it. Oh, oh, Jesus, oh. help me. Now remind me of the Lord. Thank you, 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 Lord. No. And the Bible says that the devil will come to so this change upon his heavy part and get up my life. I pray that he will not be deceived. If God will not help me, Lord, I pray that he will not be deceived. 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 Lord, I pray not to be conventions, not to be greedy. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Help us to make the right choices, O Lord, like David did, like, like Moses did. Lord Jesus, like Daniel did, like Joseph did. Help me, help every one of us, O God. Let us pray for them. Have joy and peace and eternal life. We have observed that there, there's a false standard in Christianity. Thank you, Lord. Let us pray for our ministers of God that God will help them to open that God will open their eyes to see where they have fallen from. Yes. And let Lord us Jesus, pray thank for you, the followers and the sisters. No longer be a God. That we pray for all we the are gone. We are three. Oh, 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 one problem or the other because of this year's pressure. Oh, oh, God rescue them. Save 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 them. 
It was not they have to confess their weakness. They have to come as a God. Oh, King of Glory. As many of us have heard in bondage to be delivered. We say three. Lord, we can be deceived. We set free in the name of Jesus. We will grace to serve you acceptably. Let them know. 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 Let to the rock. In the name of yeah. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah to that holy name. Thank you, Father. Give you all the praise. Yeah. Give you all the glory. For, for revival in the churches, in the church in North America, we pray for revival in the church in Europe, in the we church in Africa. Africa. Yes, Lord. And we pray for yes, revival for all the churches. In Rot, that in these me. last days, oh God, there will be revival. Your in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I pray that you give us the grace to run this race to the end. Amen. Help us, oh God. All of oh, us will not be tempted God. like uh, uh, Abraham to sacrifice our children, but we may be asked to sacrifice our time, our sleep, our yes. money. Father, help us not to fail any test, no matter Amen. how small. Or big it may be. Help us not to make mistakes. If we have made mistakes in the past, Lord, have mercy on us. Have mercy on our past mistakes. Uh, you know, the mistake you make can rob on another person. Father, oh God, I pray that as many people that may have uh, copied wrong examples from me, I pray for them, oh God, mm. that you forgive them, you will help them to retrace their steps. Yes, in the name Amen. of Jesus Christ. Yes, Amen. Father, everything, every wrong message that we have preached, that we have every wrong attitude that we have put up, that may have led others astray. Father, we pray for forgiveness for everyone. Yes, Amen. Lord. No one will be lost to God in Amen. the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God, at this time, we pray for those that are sick. Of any sickness, of any disease, whatever name the doctors Lord, they have called those it. Those that are in coma. We plead the blood Lord, of with them up. Revive that woman. We plead the blood of Jesus for their healing. The of Jesus for their restoration. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit that is dead will pronounce life on them. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every cancer we pronounce life unto them in Jesus' name. Amen. Every baby that is in the incubator now, we pray for them. Amen. All that the process you bring to pass, we replace the past that we're missing in the yes, name Lord. of Jesus Christ. There will be no malformation of their fetus. The Lord, mm -hmm. Lord, right from the womb, you will baptize those children, feed those fetus with the Holy Spirit. So that when mm -hmm. they are born, oh God, they will have a desire to follow you. In the name of Jesus Christ. We pray Amen. for all those that are ready for marriage and have not had their suitors, their spouses. Father, that you will direct them that they will not out of anxiety make mistakes. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 For jobs those that have gotten already, Lord, that you will provide them. for them. To because prepare. so that they will not be God. hungry. In the name of Jesus Christ. We ask Amen. God to bless the works of our hands, the fruits of our bodies, and the imaginations of our hearts. All those that are in and within us that have not yet known you, we pray for their redemption. In the Amen. name of Jesus Christ. All those of God that are pretentious and have been deceived, we pray for their 
uh, restoration in the Amen. name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Thank Amen. you so much as we pray for the government of uh, America as they are preparing for the election, Lord, that you have your way. Amen. In the name Amen. of Jesus Christ. Father Amen. Lord, we pray for our brethren in Pakistan that are facing terrible persecutions, our brethren in Nigeria and other parts of the world have your way. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray for the Father. God that will make us heaven it's ready it. at this yes. time. Even if you have to come this night and we not come of rapture, you have to call any of us home, we will be ready in the yes, name Lord. of Jesus Christ. Thank Amen. you, Father, because you are good. We Thank give you all good. the glory, Lord. Lord, we give you honor, Lord, we give you all the glory. Lord, we give you all the glory, Lord. Lord, we give you all the glory, Lord. we give you all the glory, we share the grace in fellowship with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Love of God the Father and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us the days of our lives. And the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you so very much for finding time to be with us this evening. If the Lord tarries, we look forward to seeing you next week, the same time and the same Zoom link. Emphasis is the rapture ready. Repent every Amen. act of wickedness, knowing that the days are evil. And please help to share and help to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just press the subscription button so that you get the message directly once it's uploaded and you can also share it on your social media platform. Thank you so very much and God bless you. Have a good night. 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 Good night.